Time into the breach, my friends. Here we are back for another problem with magnetic fields. And again, I love all these. These questions about wires, they're always just using the same equation over and over and over. And don't know why I wrote that as a capital R. But anyway, a little R would suffice. All I'm looking at in this problem is I'm looking for B at this point P. So what I've got to first do is I want to find an, ooh, I got two different conductors. I want to find my B for the 5 amp. Well, B for the 5 amp would be mu O 5 times 2 pi, and it's at a distance of 0.2 meters from uh, P, so that's easy. Then I want to find the B for this 3 amp conductor, mu O 3 times 2 pi, and in this case, I need to figure out a little bit of a resultant here on this thing. I need to figure out this triangle. So this is going to be, give me back that calculator, 0.2 square plus 0.2 square. And let's take a square root of that answer, 0.28. So this is 0.28 this way across here, 28 centimeters. And so 0.28. And let's see if we can't just go ahead and get these Bs and record them. So in this case, I've got, and if you remember, if you've seen the videos already, that's 4 pi, 10 to the negative 7, so it kind of cancels down. So 2, 10 to the negative 7 times 5 divided by 0.2, because the 2 pi's would cancel. And this one's 5 micro tesla. And now let's see what this other guy is. Hopefully it'll be a nice smooth number as well. 2, 10 to the negative 7 times 3 divided by 0.28 equals 20, oh, just 2, 2.1. So it equals 2.1 micro tesla. And this one's weaker in field strength for two reasons. One, it's farther away, and it's also got less current. So that explains it. And now all this is going to be is this. You've got to use your right-hand rule. So take your hand. Now this dot means the current's coming right at your face. So lay your hand on the screen with your thumb pointed in the same direction as this dot, which means at you. And which direction do your fingers turn? Well, I can lay my hand on there, and what I'm going to notice is my fingers curl this way. And that gives me the direction of my magnetic field is counterclockwise. And likewise, it's counterclockwise for this guy. So why is that important, Mr. Turd Ferg? For one simple reason. It tells me something. This 5 amp at location P, that 5 amps is going to be... 90 degrees counterclockwise to point P. So I've got a 5 micro tesla point at point P, 90 degrees to that 5. And now we'll come back, and now it tells me something else. I've got, I'm going to do this guy, I'm going to do the 3 amp. And as well, for him, 90 degrees to the 3 amps, I've got, kind of drawing over my problem here. Get that problem out of here. <laughs> hey, go away. So at this point, I've got a 2.1 micro Tesla charge. And what's funny, let's see, the angle would be 0.2 and the other one's 0.2. These are all 45 degree angles, so that's kind of easy on math. So at 45 degrees at that location, point P, the problem is essentially done. The only part of this problem that I really want to see more of, I wonder if I can just grab that one little piece that I want. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Control copy. I want to look at that one little piece in detail. Control V. This is all I want to look at is this. 
And looking just at that, all I'm going to do is do resultant on that. So I'm going to do a sum of the x's, and I'm going to do a sum of the y's. I do not have any positive x's. I have a 5 and a... So I need to do something. That's going to be... Oh, this is a nice little problem. It's going to be negative 5 minus 2.1 cosine 45. This is just like a hiker in the woods question. Sum of the force is y. Well, the 5 doesn't even have a y, so all I've got is a 2.1 sine 45. And let's see what we can't do here with a calculator. So we've got negative 5 minus 2.1 cosine 45 means we've got negative 6.48. Now, if we're doing units, it's still micro teslas. And then we've got a 2.1 sine 45. 0.1 times 0.707. Too tired to do the whole sine 45 thing. Or is it 747? That's a great question. Sine of 45. 0.707. I was right. Times 2.1. Didn't want to embarrass myself. This is World Wide Web. 1.48. Again, this is a hiker in the woods. If you do not understand what a hiker in the woods problem is, go back to my Unit 3 videos. This is not the time to be teaching it now. And so this tells me I've got a vector that resolves to two components, a 6.48 west, if you will, and a 1.48 to the north. Uh, I want to do a resultant now upon that. So do your resultant. So the resultant of those two vectors, 6.48 square plus 1.48 square, square root, that answer equals 6.6. .6. So I've got a resultant magnetic field in this problem. I've got a resultant magnetic field of 6.48 microteslas at an angle of, and how can I find that angle? I'm just going to use tangent theta. So my theta would be tan inverse tangent, or arc tangent, if you will, of 1.48. By the way, is anybody going to know this? I think I didn't write down my last number right. I wrote 6.48. That is not my resultant. What a silly guy I am. It was 6.64. Jeez. Where's my class at to tell me these things? So that one was 6.64. 6.48 was just my x component. So let's go shift tangent of what we got? 1.48? It's all the 0.48s just got in my head. Plus I have a small child at home. He also gets in my head. Screams all night. Anyway equals 12.9 degrees. Hey, if we want to go straight up hiker in the woods, north of west, although I don't know that that's the way we were to answer it. Anyway, let's scroll back up here and see how these pro this looks with their answer in the book. 77, 77 degrees left of the vertical, which would be 13 degrees up from the horizontal, which is our exact same answer. They got 6.67. We got, what did we get? 6.6. .6. So all in all, we did pretty good on these. So the grand scheme of these problems is nothing but it's going to give you scenarios. It might come back in here. And I'm trying to think of something different. You've really seen them all in these videos. The most common, what they call the heart, is when you got like four wires. And then you would look at a point in the middle, and you would find the B for each of these at that distance, that R. And then you have to go through and look at which direction each one of these is pointing potentially. And then you have to do a sum of the X and a sum of the Ys. And that's what would be considered the, quote, hard problem of this chapter, perhaps. But anyway, Feliz Navidad Laheim. I think I said that wrong. But anyway, later, taters.